finally, I want to ask, what is the biggest question you'd like to answer? What I'd like to know if I had a time machine is whether or not we are going to make it to a type one civilization. Now, let me explain. In outer space, we rank civilizations outside the Earth into type one, type two, type three. Type one is planetary. They control the weather. They control volcanoes and earthquakes. They have cities on the ocean. Planetary civilization. Type two is more advanced. Uh, they're stellar. They control stars. Like the Federation of Planets, uh, Captain Kirk and the Enterprise are members of a type two civilization. Then we have type three, which is galactic. They've colonized the galactic space lanes, like the Borg, or like the Empire of the Empire Strikes Back. Now, what are we on this scale? Do we control the weather? Do we control the sun? Do we control the galaxy? No, we are type zero. Oh. We get our energy from dead plants, oil and coal. We're not even on the radar screen. But we're about 100 years away from being type one. And that's, why, that's what I want to see, whether or not we're going to make it to type one. Like, for example, look at the internet. What is the internet? The internet is the beginning of a type one telephone system. That's all it is. The, we're seeing the beginning of a type one communication system. What will the language of type one be? English, not French, it'll be English. <laughs> what will the economy of type one look like? The European Union. These nations have slaughtered each other ever since the ice melted 10,000 years ago. <laughs> and now here they are in the European Union, for God's sake. Why? To compete with us, and we are NAFTA, okay? Yeah. And we're seeing the beginning of a type one culture. Rock and roll, blue jeans, uh, rap music, oh my God. <laughs> the beginning of a type one youth culture. So I see the birth pangs of type one everywhere, every time I look at the newspapers. But then I also see the dark side. I see nuclear proliferation threat of war, global warming, designer germ warfare. And so to me, it's not clear that we're going to make it. It's a race against time, whether or not we can create technologies that are liberating, safe, clean, before global warming and uh, nuclear proliferation set in. So I want to know whether or not we're going to make it to type one or not. Wow. I do have one quick follow-up question since you mentioned it. A lot of scientists have said that the, including, well, even though he's not a scientist, he's a politician, someone like Al Gore, many scientists have said that the environmental crisis is the greatest crisis that this planet has ever dealt with. And so, just out of curiosity, is there anything that string theory can do to advance the cause, you know, keep us from going, or, you know, can we use this to just go back in time and just tell all those coal barons, stop it? <laughs> Well, string theory is not going to give us better color television. It's not going to sa save us from the oil crisis. What it will do, though, is give us the secret of the entire universe. Now, just remember <laughs> that when Newton first worked out the gravitational force, that gave us a mechanics. That gave us the foundation of the Industrial Revolution, which then toppled the kings and queens of Europe. So the Industrial Revolution was unleashed when we mastered the first force, gravity. Then Faraday and Maxwell gave us the electromagnetic force. That gave us the internet and lasers and telecommunications and iPods and iTunes, right? Then Einstein and others liberated the nuclear force. And that gave us the nuclear weapons and also explained the secret of the stars. Now we want a theory of all forces, a super force, a theory of the super force that existed at the beginning of the universe that, have, that was broken at the instant of the Big Bang that gave us all the forces we see around us. That's what string theory is. It's a theory of the super force. All these forces have influenced human evolution on the Earth. Gravity giving us the Industrial Revolution. Electricity and magnetism giving us the computer age. Nuclear force giving us the nuclear age. And now we're thinking about the age of all forces, the age of the super force. That's string theory. So that stuff about the force in Star Wars, that's small potatoes. This is small potatoes. We're talking about, quote, reading the mind of God. Nothing less than that. Well, in the meantime, I'm definitely going to be reading your book. Thank you very much, Professor Kaku. Physics of the Impossible, go get it. Keep it on the bestseller list. It's amazing. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, my pleasure.